Could you guess where we start on this one? Okay, so the first one would be L11 times Y1 equals B1. So what does that immediately apply about Y1? Yeah, B1 is going to be, uh, Y1 is going to be B1 divided by L11. The moment I know that, is Y1 now known or unknown? It's known. Okay, could you guess where we start next? Yeah, so we started with row 1, then we go to row 2. What was row 2 there? L21 unknown value, oh, excuse me, known value Y1 plus L22 no, unknown value value y2, whole thing is supposed to be equal to b2. What does that immediately imply about y2? This is going to be 1 over l22 b2 minus l21 y1. Shall we do something a little bit crazy? Should we try to do this as a sum? Where does the sum start? Where does it end? It starts at column 1 and goes to column 1 less than the diagonal entry, right? And then this would be L 2K YK, right? So it starts at the first column. Why does it start at the first column? because that's the structure of the lower triangular matrix, right? And then it's going to go all the way until you have 1 minus the main diagonal, right? So if we looked at entry 3, I guess you could call it entry rather than row. Why does it not matter when you're talking about entry or row? What is each entry? It's a row, <laughs> So they're identical to each other. So what is entry 3 in this case? L31, Y1 plus... L32, Y2 plus L33, and then this is where I need my colors, right? Y3 is equal to B3. All right, so now what do we have? My unknown Y3 is going to be 1 over L33, B3 minus the sum from start at the first row, go to the row right before the diagonal. What's the row right before the diagonal there? Sorry, the column. Yep, you're right. Two. Three. It must be three. How could you have told it was three? Because we're in our entry three, right? L3, K, Y, K. All right. Are we ready to generalize? Should we just write up the algorithm in general? Yeah, let's do it. So this is now uh, an initialization step and a for loop. Actually, two for loops, right? We have an outer for loop and an inner for loop. Okay, so let's do it. What is forward substitution? How do we initialize? Well, y1 would be b1 divided by whatever the right-hand side, the first entry of that right-hand side, divided by the main diagonal entry in row 1. And then when we talk about rows 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n, and perhaps we call that i, right? Okay, so if I wanted to get the ith entry of this thing, can you guess what that is? Well, the ith entry is going to be the 1 over the diagonal entry in that row. And what about the sum? bi minus, in this case it's a different sum, right? In the other case, we started with the last column and worked to the one right before the main diagonal entry because of the structure or the anatomy of the upper triangular matrix, right? In this case, we're not going to start with the last column, but instead we're going to start with the first column. And then what's the upper bound? It's going to go to one before the main diagonal entry. And then what would this be? Well, this is row number i. We're summing across the columns, 
and then because it's forward substitution, we stop, start at the top and then go down, right? And then we would run all the way from the second row down to the last row. 